Okay, now that you've got Blender all set up with the appropriate add-ons enabled, um, in the Dropbox folder I've shared with you, there will be a folder called Models, within which there are a couple models that we'll be using for some kind of essentially training examples. Um, I'll also be saving versions of this Blend file along the way and putting them in the training.blends. Um, so I've already loaded up these models, but the ones we're going to be working with are the same ones that have been in all my other videos. Just uh, because things have changed a little bit, I figured I'd work through this whole example one more time from start to finish uh, using the current interface. So these are the two models which I've already imported into Blender. So you'll want to hit space, import, STL, navigate to that folder, and bring in these two models. The first thing we'll do is drop down the design parameters. We'll select one of the models by right clicking. We notice that it's highlighted in red. And this is the opposing model. We'll make that the opposing. We'll now right click on the model with the prep on it. Now it's highlighted in red. We'll make that the master model. And you notice you get feedback here in these little tabs. The prep model, the margin, distal, and mesial will all be defined as we work through. But what having Having these able to be defined as any model in the outliner will allow us to work on multiple restorations at the same time later. Um, these parameters are all fine, and block out is now automatic. It gets blocked out no matter what, whether you check this or not. So this is a, kind of a vestigial piece, and that will get cleaned out in the next update. Okay, uh, we're working on tooth number one six, and that's the um, international. So quadrant and then distance from center system. So tooth number three for us Americans. And that's all we have to do now. And we'll click process. Okay, uh, one other bug that I've found is you can't move your 3D cursor at this step. If you do and then rotate the model to where you want it to be, things won't work out in the next step. So for now, make sure you hit Shift C that your cursor is centered. Now, rotate the model such that you're looking down along the insertion axis. Hit R and then Y, R and then Z. And we want to align the mesial distal direction in X. And that's to take advantage of screen real estate and also when we're applying the dynamic contacts, if, uh, if it's set as X, that makes it a lot easier. So now that this is aligned, before we center our view here, we want to set the axis. Now we can center our view. And what we want to do now is split this model up into kind of smaller pieces. That'll make it easier to work with. And if your computer's running a little slow, after this step, it should speed up significantly. OK, so there's several ways we can do this. The first thing we want to select is the distal surface of the mesial tooth. You can select as much of it as you want, but I find that of just this area here. And we can hit C to circle select and scroll up and select it. But what I find is easy, especially when contact's been broken nice and cleanly, if you hit B, you can select just like you would in many other programs. Also, at this time, you want to make sure that this little button is not activated. It'll be red like this one if it's active. Define mesial. Come back here. Hit B again. Fine, distal, and you don't have to be that skimpy with your selections. You can you know, get more of the tooth, but it doesn't really matter. You just need a, a good uh, surface that the contact is going to be made on. And conveniently, this prep does fit um, in a box like this, so I can use the border select to select it as well. But normally, you might have to use this circle select to kind of get into the contours. All right, final step. And 
this is the area where a cement gap will be formed. Right click to finish circle selecting. Alright. 